Like, what is your actual goal with your social media? Maybe your goal is none of that and you want to keep a social media up in case you're looking for a new job. But just understand that if your online presence does not make a good first impression, it is affecting you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. We did a live mastermind on designing Next Level Focus. Oh, yeah? Today, for episode number 519, we are going to talk to you about why you must commit to your social media game in 2021. So to provide some context here, let's just imagine you are talking on the phone with a friend, and this friend says that they found this new podcast called Next Level University. The very first thing that other person's going to do after their friend basically says it's this awesome podcast that will help you change your life, is they're going to look it up online. No matter what business, no matter what person, okay, let's say you're uh, applying to a new job. You better believe your employer, when processing that application, is going to look you up online. I remember I applied to work on Darren, Darren Hardy's team a while back, and they actually asked for my social media handles. The point is this. Anytime there's a new person, place, thing, or idea that comes into your consciousness, what do you do? You look it up online. You look it up on Facebook or Instagram or Google or YouTube. And that's just the way the world works now. It wasn't always that way. I remember uh, working at Sensata Technologies, which used to be Texas Instruments, and there was this huge building that made a first impression, a great first impression. What I find interesting is that some of the biggest companies in the world now, they, they don't have to have this massive building to get a great first impression as long as they have a good website as long as they have a good platform as long as they have a good service or whatever online footprint and so what kevin and i wanted to do on this episode is basically take you through not just why social media is so important for your future but also how to use it well and basically what you're going to get if you do i think about this when i'm going to order food online if you don't have a website that allows me to order the food on the website, like, you know what I mean? To yeah. make a cart, and then it blows my mind. It's like, you guys are jeffing so hard. I know. Is it? Does it cost more? Probably. But imagine all the people who won't go to you. Because right. there's a Domino's. If I want pizza, I can do all that on Domino's and then deliver it. I know. Right? It's like, if if you're, and again, I know that's a little bit different than the social media, but it's it's similar. It's very similar. Because that is, your website is social if you're if you're taking orders from it. So, yeah, we if you are an entrepreneur, if you have somebody who's starting a business, or if you're somebody who's starting a business. Or you want to. Or you want to in the future, like, or you're looking to get a new job. Like, the social media, like Alan said, is the new medium where people go. Mm. The first thing you do when you, again, I'm not on dating apps because I'm very happily in a relationship, but when you're on a dating app, What's the first thing you do? You look them up on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is. It's right. the first thing you do. The first thing you do is look at Yelp reviews when you're going to try a new restaurant or whatever it is. So it's so important. So important. Do you want to do deeper understanding first? Yeah. So I think that we there's this saying of don't judge a book by its cover. And while I understand the value of that saying, I don't know if that's really possible at first. Uh, Jim Rohn talks a lot about this. He says... You know, you can be the best person in the world on the inside, but when before someone really knows you, they're going to take a look. And so it, imagine two people, right? One person is incredibly well-dressed and incredibly well-kept, and they're very clean, and they're very tidy, and they show up in a, a brand-new, beautiful car. And, you know, they when you look them up on social media, you can see in the background that their house is very well-decorated, and, you know, it, it makes an impression... And while you don't want that to be the only thing you look at, because that's judging someone before you know them, you do it, your subconscious does correlate, oh, this person's probably well-kept. This person's probably self-disciplined. This person, I'll give you another example. If someone's in really, really good shape, there's a lot of presuppositions that come with that. You know, if someone's in really good shape, you know they probably, you know, track their calories. They probably work out frequently. They probably are an athlete or used to be an athlete. There's a lot of assumptions that our subconscious mind 
does very, very quickly. Um, if anyone out there listening really wants to dig deep into this concept, Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink, is all about this. How our subconscious mind makes snap judgments in the blink of an eye that are actually insanely accurate. Um, and so the problem is, is when you make snap judgments that are wrong, sometimes that's racism. Sometimes it's like there's a lot that can go with that. Mm-hmm. And so, but just understand that if your online presence does not make a good first impression, it is affecting you. And thinking that it's not is just unintelligent. I also wish that everyone didn't judge a book by its cover, but it's just not human nature. Before you get to know someone, you're going to go off of what you can see at first. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So for me, I want to give you guys tangible takeaways. I want you to have action steps for when you're done this episode so you can figure out what to do. So number one for me, understand what your goal with social media is. Okay, again, maybe you don't have a business, right? Maybe you do. If you have a business, what is your goal? Is your goal to get more people to understand what you do? Is your goal to get new clients? Is your goal to grow a followership so you can get people to send you free stuff? Like, what is your actual goal with your social media? Maybe your goal is none of that and you want to keep a social media up in case you're looking for a new job, Mm. right? Like you want it to be, you know, a nice social media that shows you're a good human being. At the end of the day, like your goal is going to determine what you're actually doing. Right. So that's what I would say. Again, I remember, you know, early on when we were doing this, like my goal was to look like a podcaster. Well, that goal is going to evolve. Now I want to look, think of, okay, we'll, we'll go behind the curtain. Our, my social media, I'll talk about mine, is catered for different things. Right, like when I do the quotes, I want people to think and be like, "Oh, wow, that's a really good quote. Maybe I'll share that." I love when you guys share it. I really appreciate it. Right. Then the podcast clips are so to add value. Of course, value is always the first thing that we look for. Right. And then it's so you guys know we're having this episode on this date. We have this guest, exactly. So you can see the studio. Like, there's reasons behind why people do everything on social media. Okay. So understanding your goal, number one. That's my number one takeaway. Number two, make it. Something that you do every day, okay? At the end of the day, how long does it really take to post on social media? Mm. It's not super difficult as long as you're not getting caught, you know, in the in the rabbit hole of things. That is difficult. Yeah, yeah. That, that part Genuinely, is difficult. Genuinely, yeah. yeah. I've gotten better. Same. Um, and I know you have, but yeah. understand that that's a practice. And naturally, I'm going to go into deeper understanding here. If you want to post on social media once a day, try to do it like first thing in the morning or make a ritual out of it where it's at the same time every day and try really, really hard to not get lost in what everyone else is doing. At the end of the day, I think it's important for us as social creatures to to understand and be aware of what other people are doing to an extent. You know, when I'm posting, so today I posted a teaser clip from one of our episodes and I noticed on Facebook a few things that my family and friends are doing that I am glad I'm aware of. And so I think awareness is one of the reasons we have social media, but what I would say is that there's creators and there's consumers, and we're all both. Try hard to stay on the creative end as far as possible because the consumer end is is naturally going to pull you. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. And again, like Alan said, it's a work in progress. Right. That's something that, you know, we've been working on and consistently working on. For years. Yeah. Uh, Number three, change your relationship with social media. Mm -hmm. So I have been listening to a lot of Gary Vee lately, Big fan. Uh, again, I know he comes off as brash sometimes, but his value is, honestly, it's some of the best in the industry. But be, all his thing is content. Content, content, content. How much content can, can you create? All that happy jazz. Right. At the, under, end of, at the end of the day, be nice if I could talk. Imagine this. If we were 30 or 40 years ago, if you had a small business, you would be printing ads in newspapers. Mm-hmm. You'd be running commercials. You'd be having billboards. You'd be going and putting stickers on people's cars, you have the ability to promote yourself, your business, your mission, your purpose, your impact for free yep. on every single platform and there's people that will look. Right. All right? Like under, like change your relationship from this is a very negative thing to you have created it as a negative thing and if you really want to make it positive, you can. Like we, again, we know people who are living off their social media. Right? A lot of our promotion is on social media. Right. You probably found this show through social media. Right. Or someone else told you about the show who found it on social but media. But think of it this way. Okay, your friend comes to you and says, hey, there's this podcast. Yeah. Like these guys, they just, they're just they awesome dudes and I'm hopefully using your words and, and not <laughs> talking ourselves up. You know, you should listen to their show. First thing they're going to do, 
not, not even that. If you share my post, they can click on it. It'll take them right to my page. Mm. So they're going to see my social media. Right. Right? So it's like, if you're not, you, if you have a business and you're not using your social media, or if you're looking to get more clients and you're not using your social media, you are Jeffin for sure. Right. And we've been there for sure. Yeah. But 2021 should be the year where you go in on that for sure. It's, this is an interesting thing. Uh, and I'll use the charity initiatives that we did this year. I'm super proud of us. You, me, Emilia, uh, Johanna, Amy, so many people contributed and all the people who donated as well. But this is a perfect example of how social media is a good thing. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Kevin and I partnered with David Meltzer to help buy clothes for Burncoat Elementary, which is a Worcester school. And if you haven't seen the video come through social media, I highly recommend you check it out because this is a perfect example of how social media can be leveraged for a really good cause. Mm. And on top of that, Emilia and I created uh, Books for Babes, which is basically an initiative to get inspiring books into the hands of underprivileged kids who want to feel loved on Christmas, but also get something useful to kind of associate all the magic of Christmas with books, which are valuable. And, you know, between the video that you and I created with the David Meltzer Initiative and the video that Emilia and I created on Facebook Live, those two videos that I posted across all platforms, I would average at least 50,000 people saw it across all the platforms on both videos. So 25,000 each. It's not those, those aren't the exact numbers, but can you imagine, dude, Foxborough Stadium, I think holds what, 70,000 or 60,000? Like yeah. I remember being at a Taylor Swift concert many years back. And uh, I remember looking around going, holy shit, there's a lot of people here. That amount of people got exposed <clears throat> to this charity. It's not just views. It's not just likes. It's human beings. And if you can remember that Imagine standing in the middle of Foxborough Stadium. For those of you who don't know, it's the biggest stadium in Massachusetts where the Patriots play. Imagine standing in the middle of Foxborough Stadium talking about your charity, talking about your business, right. talking about this cause. You know, it's ideas can change the world. And we see, you know, 1,500 views on a Facebook video and we think, ah, that's really not that good. It's unbelievable because if you were in a room of 1,500 people, trust me, it's, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we all have to reassociate. I know I certainly do. It's not just views and numbers. It's human beings. And, you know, when we see, you know, our friends on social media getting thousands and thousands of views when they're adding value, it's tremendous the impact that can have if it's used for good. Uh, and that's just one thing I wanted to end I, with. I dig it. You got to do your things. We I got to do my we things. Gotta, we got <laughs> to hammer here. My, my things are done. You already did them? I did all three. Wow. I know. You're Crazy, wild. right? You're wild. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand that I don't know. I just think that COVID has taught us a lot. Yeah. And it's interesting. Somebody, Alan and I were talking about this. One of the guys I was talking to like eight months ago called me today out of the blue. Mm. And I, I told Alan, like when I saw his name come up, I was thinking like either he wants to start a podcast, he's ready, or he's going to wish me a happy new year. And he's talking to me about wanting to start a podcast. And he said like, well, what is like, what is it going to do for me? I don't really like, I'm not really sure. And I said, at the end of the day, 2020, and the pandemic has taught us this giant thing that if you're stuck in one place, you might be in a lot of trouble. Like if you have a brick and mortar building and you have no social media presence, your ability to reach the masses just isn't there. Right. It just isn't there. Right. And I said, this, you're going to build your brand and you'll be able to reach more people and you'll right. be able to impact more people online. When I go to your social media, if I'm not impressed, I'm probably not going to follow up. I know. Imagine if you could be a guest on this show and change someone's life. You you cannot impact someone. I remember Marie Forleo talked about this. She basically said that if you do not focus on better marketing, you are doing everyone who could benefit from your service yeah. a disservice. And so if this podcast, we'll use us as an example, not because it's about us, but because we want you to really understand. If this podcast has added value and, and legitimately changed your life for the better, small or big, that would not have been a thing if we were not leveraging social media. We would be two guys who no one knew about and, and we would never have reached you. And so just think about that. Think about a product or service or podcast or TV show or something that changed your life legitimately for the better without marketing, without promotion, without 
that billboard or that that social media post or whatever it is. I guess we just have to reassociate. Marketing is not bad. Yeah. Some people use it for bad. Yeah. And and if the bad guys, quote unquote, are using it for bad, how are we going to drown out the bad without using it for good? Mm. And uh, that's the, the last thing that I would say. It's just you are doing the world a disservice by staying small. Alan's going to read a, what did I call it? Uh, a ne- oh, no. next level... Next level love. Next level love. Next level love from somebody. Also, this is one more thing. I know a lot of people are afraid to post on social media because they're maybe they're not confident in what they're doing, or they're you know how many people have you met have have a podcast but don't really promote it? Oh yeah, man. You have to understand that. Are you going to annoy people? You might annoy some people, but you're going to help way more people than you're going to annoy. You got to stop letting the the fear of the judgment from five people stop you from impacting. 5, you know, 5,000 or whatever, whatever the number is for you. I so know. the post, Alan, Alan used to say this, the post you put up can't, or the post you don't put up can't help anybody, mm. right? So if you're committed to your growth and the growth of your business or whatever it is in 2021, social media has to be a, a giant piece. Has to be. This is a fire episode. I Very important. I Very important. I see that. I love it. All right. So this is Laura. No last names. So Laura posted this in Next Level Nation. And if you're not in Next Level Nation, please go there. Private Facebook group. Okay. Thanks for the big welcome. My name is Laura. I'm Spanish and based in Madrid. I'm an intensive care nurse, so you can imagine how busy this year has been for me. Mm-hmm. Not only professionally, but also a very challenging year personally. My goal is to grow and find my place in the world because I still have some doubts about this. Having discovered the podcast about two months ago, I must say that I feel that my life is changing for the better. I am becoming a much better person. And so my priority is to find people who can support who can support me along the way, and I'd like to tell my story one day. So why do you need to commit to social media in 2021? We would never have reached Laura if we didn't commit to social media. Kevin and I post almost every single day. We could do a better job oh, for sure. because that's how you amplify and perpetuate the impact. And the very last thing I'll say here is the charity initiatives that we did, dude, if you're not capturing the kindness, how can it amplify and perpetuate? It's no longer going to be a thing of like, oh, look at us and all the good we're doing. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with if you don't see it, it will not perpetuate, period. How can it? Um, how can it get shared? And and I am blown away by the amount of people that donated. Um, you know, in GoFundMe, even if it's an, anom- on a, an anonymous, wow, an anonymous donation, we can see who did it. Who fun- And it was so... It brought us to tears how many people stepped up. And there's a lot of good in the world. There's a lot more good than people see. Uh, Emilia and I expected nothing, and we were willing to match up to 500 bucks. And, you know, we ended up with like eight or $900. And we bought 800 books. And then other books were donated. Mm-hmm. It was just a whole thing. And without social media, it wouldn't have been possible. So again, that's just the takeaway. And thank you, Laura, for that, your kind words. Yeah, and Laura, she wants to tell her story, right? right? How are you going to tell your story? You're going to have to start telling your story little by little on, on social media. So, so very interesting. Powerful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you are looking to start a podcast in 2021, we're actually going to be doing an episode on starting a podcast, which is, in, that's the first time we've ever done it, but I am super excited. Uh, whether you're a podcaster who has a show and you want to monetize, you want to learn how to get better guests, you want to learn how to systematize your your show, or you're somebody who says, you know what, I think 2021, I want that to be the year where I finally start this podcast and get my message out like Laura wants to do, reach out at Never Quit Kid, and uh, I guarantee that we have a service you know, maybe for you it's not getting everything done and being on YouTube and all that. Maybe for you it's just a little bit of consulting. We have a service that will fit your needs at Next Level Podcast Solutions. And the last thing I'd say here is the community is more powerful than Kevin and myself by a significant margin. If you enjoy this podcast, that's great, and that's one part of the business. But the community around the masterminds, Next Level Nation, everyone who's become a part of this Next Level community, I've seen them grow at such an accelerated rate. Um, And I want to encourage everyone not only to go to Next Level Nation, but also every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do weekly masterminds. Those are trainings. And if you hear them on the show, you'll notice that it's a little bit of a deeper dive. Kevin and I were just talking not long ago, uh, actually 10 minutes ago, about how those trainings are 
more intense. Mm. And they're designed to be more intense. You're only going to get to level four if you're not willing to go as deep as level six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And those trainings are designed to be a little more hardcore. Um, and imagine again watching on YouTube versus being live at the concert. It's different. Come join us. Put your Instagram handle in the chat. Meet like-minded people because Kevin and I can only do so much. But if you meet other next level people in a next level community, your life can amplify way beyond your wildest dreams. And I've seen it happen. And I can say that all day, but I know Amy would say the same. I know Kevin would say the same. I know Bianca would say the same. So there's a, a lot of people, I don't want to say a million, there's a lot of people who have benefited tremendously from meeting like-minded people at those masterminds. Please join us. And like we said on the coaching episode, Bring questions. Right. You might not know exactly what we're going to talk about. If we talk about 10 ways to be more consistent, bring a question. I know I'll listen to an audiobook and be like, I want to know more about that. Right. I wish I could ask that question. You can stop us at any time, interrupt us, type in the chat. You can ask the question. We just want to help as many people as we can. And I think it's a great way to fear chase as well. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Up next on Friday for an episode number 520, we are going to go through setting 2021 intentions. That is always a popular episode for us, so we're going to help you set your intentions and then pay attention to them and then take action. So coincidence will happen. We hope you enjoyed this, and as always, we do not have fans. We have family. Talk to you soon. Bye.